Oh, so my name is uh, Jacob Pitch. I work for the city of Racine. I'm a programmer, database administrator, and the CityWorks admin. I've been adminning CityWorks for roughly three years now. Um, so I've, I've got a lot of good hands-on experience with it. Let's see. I don't know if I have, oh, there we go. So yeah, what I'm gonna be talking about today is uh, an application that we had developed for us um, using CityWorks PLL API. Um, <clears throat> we haven't had a chance to use the API before. I think we had a license to kind of test it out, but we didn't really have enough time with everything going on to uh, do the work ourselves, so we had it outsourced. And I was uh, pleasantly surprised at how easy it was to work with it, so. Excuse me, a little congested. So uh, we have a program in the city of Racine called the Rents Initiative. Um, essentially, it it's a program that kind of keeps property owners uh, responsible for their properties, whether they're rental uh, properties or commercial. Um, this The end goal for the Rents program is to ensure that renters, uh, so people renting, um, they you know they have a good um, good quality of renting and habitability in their house. Um, this is because we have some problem areas in Racine that, um, you know, uh, just the houses aren't really kept up as well. So um, the mayor's office launched this initiative um, to kind of help counter that and to keep buildings and homes uh, in good repair for, for renters. Um, <clears throat> it opens up a direct line of contact between us, the city, and whoever is in charge of uh, the property. So whether it's a, a commercial property or a rental, there's uh, there's an owner obviously, which where we send any, uh, if there's any code enforcement issues to. But this also enables them to give us their contact. So if they have somebody that's taking care of the property, uh, we can just get directly with them if we have any issues. So <clears throat> this is, the front facing, uh, this is not, and I, people asked whether I was using public access or not, but uh, we found that this was just a, a little bit more um, customizable to do it this way and use the API. So essentially uh, somebody gets a letter or they get a notification that they need to register their website, or I'm sorry, register their website, register their property. Um, so they'll start here, they can enter their contact name, and it's just kind of the normal stuff that you'd expect. And then the next slide, um, after you enter your application information, so whoever's applying for the permit, um, then we've got the, the search address. So that, that comes from a view from RGIS. Uh, it also does a PLL API call to see if there's already a case registered in CityWorks in our system. Um, if there is, then you get an error message. Um, and if not, and it, it just knows, like, as you can see right there, the property registration type is the initial registration because there's the PLL did a call and it didn't find, or the API did a call and it didn't find anything. So let's go on. <clears throat> so the API uses, um, we have, it adds fees, it adds payment, it adds notes, and it results some tasks. So this is the, the workflow that we use um, you can see the rents registration type. So there's three different types. There's by uh, a, a registration by person, by entity, or by trust or life estate. And then whether or not it's commercial or rental, we just have it as a result code. Um, the reason we did it that way, instead of putting it in case data or anything like that, is just it's a lot easier to search. So for reporting, uh, reporting purposes, we can just pull a report, hit that task, and then just select all the codes. Um, that uh, the result codes, so that gives us an idea of you know which types of registrations we have rolling in. There's also uh, just a couple of review tasks, and then a registration complete task. And I'll I'll skip to the next one here. Oh, maybe I didn't. I think I forgot that. Um, <clears throat> so we have a, a registration complete task, and what the website does if we go back a couple slides, right here. So when you search for an address, so for this example, 122 Echo Lane, the API does a call to see if there's a case. If there is a case, then it'll let you know here. 
and if the case is to the point where too far, sorry. The case is to the point where the registration complete is marked as yes, then the API will um, complete another task and it basically just reinserts that workflow. So if, if somebody needs to come and make a modification after they've already registered, um, they can they can do that right on the website. So uh, yeah, we've so we've had just about 6,000 people register so far. We sent out about 12,000 letters to see if, uh, just for potential properties, the way we checked that was to see if the owner address is different than the parcel location itself. So if it was different, then we could kind of infer that it might be a, a, a rental or something like that. Um, <clears throat> we encourage people to register with coupons. So they're just coupons for appliances like refrigerators, microwaves and stuff they can drop off for free at the uh, at the recycling center that we have. Uh, we also, in the letters that I mentioned before, um, we did a little bit of a social experiment to see um, whether we write to the person with an incentive to say, hey, you get this free coupon if you register your property with us. And then the other version of that letter was to say, if you don't register by October 10th, you might get a fine of Five hundred dollars or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, we're still we're still tracking that one, but I thought that was an interesting uh, interesting little concept here.